Okay, then let's now focus on the next big topic on PST this week. And that's, of course, previewing a big day seven coming up. This is going to be massive. Group C and D are in action. Of course, that means Argentina are back in action. Uh, they play Mexico. And then, of course, as well, we have France against Denmark, the reigning champs coming up against, uh, you know, a very good Danish team, been really good in qualifying. Uh, and elsewhere in those two groups, some other really intriguing games, I think, Nick, as well, that we've really enjoyed from some of those teams. Tunisia against Australia in Group D and Poland against Saudi Arabia in Group C. Obviously, Saudi Arabia causing that huge, huge shock. But let's start in Group D first. France against Denmark. I mean, defensively, do we think France can improve a bit? Because they gave up a goal against Australia, went down, came back, won 4-1 in their opener, made light work of it in the end. But um, defensively, just looked a little bit shaky. Uh, but to be fair, they're playing Denmark, who did not look great against Tunisia in that nil-nil draw to kick off their tournament. And their one kind of argument with them is that they don't really have that star striker to match all their great midfielders and attackers. So France against Denmark, they played against each other a lot in the Nations League recently. That's going to be a, a fun one to watch, right? It will. Uh, I have the same questions that you have, down to the letter. Denmark whether it was Scott Olsen or Cornelius or whoever was in there because they made some subs as well, uh, the forwards did not look dangerous. And if if this was four years ago, we're talking about Christian Eriksen still being slightly more mobile, able to really attack and, and take over a game on his own. Well, we see with Man United where Eric Ten Hag think he's, thinks, thinks he's uh, the most effective way to attack is, is to be a bit more set back. So I think France will look like they can defend better because I – I, I think what's taking away from Denmark's dark horse status right now is it's hard to think they'll consistently score. Yeah. Do you agree with that, Andy? Yeah, a hundred percent. And and having watched them very closely as somebody who really enjoyed watching them at, at the last Euros and, 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 you know, was backing them from the beginning, it doesn't even look like the same team. The, the energy that they had during that tournament to go on that run, I believe what into the, the, the quarterfinals or the semi that was, yeah, that, that, that was an incredible team performance. And obviously they had the situation around Christian Eriksen at the beginning and they rallied around that, but it was, there was energy and there was life to that team. I just, I did not see that whatsoever in their opening game. And obviously that was made a little bit difficult by the opponent. Uh, you know, Tunisia was, you know, very rigid defensively and, and they were going to give no space, no time or anything, but I just, I don't see I don't see Denmark's outlook changing coming up against France who have, I mean, we know all the names up top. They're going to be under a lot more pressure. And I just, yeah, th this might be the real, this might be the end of a generation for Denmark. And it's going to end the way that a lot of generations do at major tournaments, I think, with a group stage flame out. Wow. That'd be a big one. Um, but yeah, with France, Nick, I mean, the usual suspects turned up, right? Even though they're missing Benzema and Cuckoo, Kante, Pogba through injury. Had Giroud scoring a couple and equaling Thierry Henry's record. Uh, so that's his ambition and aim for the rest of this tournament, right? To get that record out right. Killing Mbappe was excellent. Got his goal. Dembele was superb. Antoine Griezmann was superb. And this France team is so stacked. It's difficult to see them not going very far in this tournament, even though there are those defensive kind of deficiencies. And I suppose the midfield as well, right? Rabio. I mean, do we... We really think he can run games later in the tournament? No, but I, honestly, I think the whole group stage here is focused on some of these older, younger guys getting that sort of experience. I said to, to Andy, well, we said it. It was all of us. Sorry. I, I'm acting like this was our group chat, not the live watch along we did. Look, you needed to get to halftime with Eunice Musa and the U.S. game just to say, I've got a half against England under my belt, whether it's Uba Meccano or Kanate uh Chomani, did i say it right andy always says it right and it makes me so mad because i messed it up camavinga is still there to feature uh there are young guys who are getting their feet underneath them and i think rabio kind of has to hold it down while they get their shoes underneath I, I think france is still 1b to win this tournament um the major thing i see and i don't mean to 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 dog on andy here but andy's mentioned this a lot of times before i'm still waiting to see hugo Lloris as the guy who for a decade was one of the best goalkeepers in the world because he still is – he's got to show us that he's ready to take over a game because he will be needed to do it at least once during this tournament. 
Yeah, I think in this game for Denmark, I mean, best they can really do is kind of turn it into a bit of a midfield battle because with Hoiberg in there, with Eriksen, I think they probably that is the one area of the pitch where they do have the edge over France. So they can kind of control the tempo, create, kind of almost bore France into a bit of a mistake defensively or just to get a bit, um, lack a bit of patience because they're so used to having it their own way, right, with all their talented attackers and um, that's the one kind of area where they can they can switch off like they did against Australia where um, a couple of balls in behind them getting crosses in. And yeah, so I do have kind of reservations about France, but then they always seem to just blitz teams when they need. So this is going to be a tight game. Let, let's do some predictions for this one. What are we thinking, Andy, with France against Denmark? I don't think it's going to be that tight. I'm, I'm all the way out on Denmark. So I'm going to go, I'll go 2 0 France and, and it might be more than that. Nick? Um... A team that had Coman, Coman, excuse me, Kamavinga, Saliba, Kunde, and Varane on the bench. Yeah, I think they're fine. Uh, I'm going to go 3 0. I'm going to go 2 1 to France. I think it's going to be a little bit tighter, but they get the job done. And yeah, um, it's pretty crazy to think the players they don't have at this World Cup. And like you mentioned, Nick, the players they have on the bench. <laughs> it's wild. Um, yeah, they are. I think kind of just under the radar as well, right? Everyone's talking about Brazil, Argentina, Spain, England. They flamed out so recently and were considered a total mess as a program. And look at where they are now. Not bad. Not bad. So let's um, see how the reigning champs get on. Head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for the preview, how to watch information, team news. As France take on Denmark, two top European teams who've done really well at recent tournaments. This should be a fun one this weekend.